It's Wednesday, April 3rd. Here's what's coming up. Bam, two outs, nobody on. Jim Leland comes out to the field to berate me. No, he didn't. Out the no, field. He didn't. He goes, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? It's a hit and run. Oh, what, are you blind? What are you blind? I'm thinking like, I'm 33 years old. Like, I don't, it's 3.15 in the morning. <laughs> I don't need I don't need this headache right now. You gotta be kidding me. And I'm in love with this good life. Can't give it up. Make it to the top. Keep climbing. I wanna live it up. The good life. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. The good life. Good life. Oh, good life. Good life. Good life. Good life. Yeah. Coming in hot, Chinchy. What's going on, brother? Not much, dude. Seasonal allergy day, man. Oh, kill Is it pouring? Is it raining there? It's been raining here for two days, dude. You know, Jess works for the Mets now. Dude, the freaking... She, I forgot, because I don't actually work for a baseball network anymore, like, how annoying weather is on your life. <laughs> like, yeah. are they going to play today? She doesn't even know if she's going in today, because she doesn't know if the Mets are going to play today. It's great. And like, it kills oh. your life. You, you become, when you're a big league ball player or in the industry, you become, oh, you become the expert. greatest weatherman expert, dude. You like, you know, radar, you know, you know, the freaking pressures that are coming in from the south and the east. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Little known fact Google, what I used to do was I got the app that the umpires used and that the league used for my weather. Cause, you know, you get a, you get a weather app on your iPhone and it's like, it's kind of half-assed to be honest it's not as that's terrible yeah they have whatever they're using i used to use so i would know what they were thinking <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean instead of trying oh, to yes oh there's a what do they call it this is the worst thing window window that's the worst thing baseball players hear oh. right the window. there's a window there's a window from eight to nine ten <laughs> i'm like well what are we gonna do for that and you've just had six hot dogs before that when you're like oh, oh man exactly dude you're, you're like i said you're in the you're in Milwaukee eating bratwurst. You're like, what? <laughs> Do you overeat like in a rain delay? It's got to be horrible. Dude, the worst rain delay I ever had, bro. Mm -hmm. it just it brought back bad memories. I actually made my stomach turn. We're we're playing Sunday night, Sunday night baseball, dude. Which we're is playing, all the worst, right? That's yeah, annoying. the worst. Tigers, Tigers, Yankees. So you know we're gonna you know Yankees Sunday night baseball. We're in Detroit. It's a monsoon, bro, all day. Like, yeah, I didn't think we were going to go to the park. I'm like, we're not even going to the park today. We get to the park, take BP, all that stuff. And they're like, all right, we're, you know, we're in a holding pattern, man. So, dude, Chinchy, we get to like 11 o'clock. Guys are showered, ready to go. Like, everyone, I mean, Maglio is in jeans and t shirt, about to walk out. Literally about to walk out. Leland walks in, he's like, all right, man. He's like, 11 15, way go. 11 15 start. I'm like, Maglio's in his jeans. And a t-shirt. Are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, let's go. We're, you know, we got to do it. You know, we're playing the Yankees. I'm like, holy crap, bro. So we end up playing. Now, remember, this is, there's no time clock. No, no, like, you know, nothing right, like yeah. that. Like, this is the Yankees back when it was like, took a million times. So anyway, it's 3.15 in the morning. Not kidding. 3.15 in the morning. We're in the, t we're in extras. We're in extra innings. <laughs> there's like eight, eight loyal fans are still there just like, Giving the golf clap, you know, like, hey, they're obviously not going to work the next day. I'll never forget it. Tie ball game. Placido Polanco gets on first base, one out. Freaking, uh, I come up the bat. I'm facing Boone Logan, I believe, lefty, throwing like nice. 99, right? First pitch, dude. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to shoot that hole, see if we can get Placido first and third. We're going to be in a good situation. Guillaume comes up, wins it. So I come up. Boom, first pitch, 98 outside black. I take it. And now I know it's 3.15 in the morning, too, because I'm just like, I want to go home so bad. So does everybody here wants to go home. So first pitch, outside black, boom, strike one. So I'm like, all right. So I look down at Gene Lamont. Gene Lamont goes through the signs. Boom, he gives me gives me the hit and run. And I'm like, he must have, he must have done that. I must have seen something wrong. There's no way he's giving me the hit and run. Like, I'm a veteran player. I handle the bat well. I could shoot that hole right now. Like, I don't need a hit and run, and I'm 0-1. So, bro, sure enough, what do I do? I decide he didn't give me the hit and run. I just say, oh, I must have seen that wrong. I take oh, the no. next pitch. There goes Polanco. <clears throat> T 
takes <laughs> off. And he obviously is a hit and run, so he takes off a little late. Bro, he gets hung up. <laughs> Posada down. Next thing you know, he's in a rundown. Bam, two outs. Nobody on. Jim Leland comes out to the field to berate me. No, he, he didn't. Out the no, field. He he goes, didn't. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? It's a hit and run. Oh, what, what, are you blind? What are you blind? I'm thinking like, I'm 33 years old. Like, I don't, it's 3.15 in the morning. <laughs> I don't need, I don't need this headache right now. You got to be kidding me. But Chich, I was so scared, bro. Now I'm 0-2. I'm like, I got to get a knock. Like, I got to go deep. I got to do something. Next pitch, dude, he tries to blow one by me. I hit a rocket right by his face. Wow. Single up the middle. Next batter, Carlos Skian. Bam. Walk off two run bomb, dude. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the stats from. Are you serious? Yeah, Yeah. dude. Uh, So I score. I score. Right, right. I come around. I score, and then as I score, Gian's by me. Leland, Gian scores. We're jumping out. Leland grabs me. He's like, "What the hell? I missed the hit and run." He goes, "Ah, screw. We won." I go, "Yeah. Who cares now, Skip? Don't yell at me now. Everything's good." That's a great. You've never told that story. (laughs) <laughs> is that incredible worst rain delay of my life that's what that was that's what it was well the first the first line of this article i'm reading says after an inexplicable four hour rain delay the time there you go he's played some serious under the lights baseball then it says if you stayed up to see carlos in the game with a walk off homer off sean hen it sean hen 3 30 in the morning <laughs> 3 30 in the morning dude i was right i nailed it it's, the tiger it's traumatized me. You know, I have traumatic experience in your life. That was one. The reason I remember all of it, I it was traumatized when Leland came out and said, 1115 boys, way go. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is so good. Dude, I'm looking at all these stuff. Even the various wire services must have been asleep because they can't get the final score right. Oh, my God. Yahoo didn't have it right. Roto World didn't, didn't have it right. And MLB.com didn't have it right the next day. Because it was the game ended so late. It was so late, dude. It was so. What was the final score? The, like five all, three or something. It was, it was August twenty fifth or twenty sixth. Yeah. At, in two thousand seven. Yep. Wow, this is a great story, man. Uh, da, da, da. Did they did they say that Jim Leland came out on the field to berate Sean Casey? Is that anywhere in the article? No, I'm not. I'm not reading that in here. But no, no, out no. onto the field. Oh. Like like your dad, like your dad would do back. Like, what are you swinging at? And you're like, listen, dad, I'm I'm a, I'm 10. I'm 10 years old. My dad did that to me once in a game, my sophomore year going into my junior year of high school in like a summer league, like all-star, like pretty big league. And I swung at a first pitch curveball with the bases loaded. He started running up to me and telling me like, you swung at a first pitch curveball. What are you doing? And I was like, what? What are you doing out here? Oh my god, that was a lot of tension. I yeah. forgot about that. But yeah, that's what Leland did that to you on a major league baseball. Major did that. I was like, and I'm like I'm not 23. Like I'm a career 300 here at the time. Like I'm le- I'm a legit player. He came out to just oh, berate me. <laughs> my lights just died again. God, I'm so bad at this. I gotta keep the lights charged, dude. Look what I did. Let's get into baseball right now because right. other baseball stuff. Um, let's see. If we I'm... just did. We just had a good baseball story. That was an unbelievable <laughs> baseball story. That was one of your best baseball stories you've ever told. And I've never heard it before. And I've known you for almost 20 years. Sure, right. my memory. Okay. Couple <laughs> things off the top. One, arguably one of the biggest prospects of all time, who is now like one of the best baseball players of all time, Bryce Harper. And then we're going to move on to Jackson Holiday. First and foremost, Bryce Harper was like, oh, for couldn't couldn't sniff a hit just went out and did three bombs last night first one yeah. left of center or what is that yeah left of center which is really good when you know that means Bryce that's Harper. when you know you're locked in yeah and then he just crushed two or pulled a couple uh what's your take on him and then we'll move on to jackson holiday yeah well you know looking at bryce harper oh for 11 coming in but he, he did say that he felt good at the plate. And I've been there before, man, when you're like, man, and everyone's like, oh, why are you struggling? I'm like, I don't know. Are you watching the at-bats? Like, I'm going deep into counts. You know, you, you can't judge yourself always on results. you got to make sure that your process is tight as far as, like, 0 for 11. Hey, it's okay. As long as your at-bats are good. Like, there were, you know, outcomes are distraction. Results are distraction at times. 
Because if Bryce Harper went and all of a sudden he, he he just threw the baby out with the bathwater, was like, you know what, I'm revamping everything, I'm 0 for 11. Well, you don't see those three homers last night. you know. And, and obviously he's a veteran enough guy to know, I'm good, I'm going to stick with it, I'm going to get it going. And man, you're right, Chinch. When you're going dead center as a hitter, that that couldn't be more of a perfect swing. You know, I mean, that means you're locked in. It means you're through the ball, through the middle. That's the when you're struggling, get back up the middle, get through the middle, and then you saw the next one. He hit an absolute liner bullet to right, and then then he hit a man a a, 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 a grand slam off our guy Brent Suter, who uh you know who he's really struggled against. So you know that down in lefty you know ended up golfing out of the ballpark, but that's why he's one of the best, man. That's why he's one of the best. There's a couple things about Bryce Harper I just want to say really quick because, I, I, you know what, to, there's a couple things bouncing off, uh, you know, my head as far as, like, how important the mental side of the game is on a few different levels. Listen, in life, you got to get yourself to a good state. Like, and I think, you know, because if you're not getting your – if you're not looking at life through the lens of, like, gratitude or you're not looking at the life through the, through the lens of abundance – you're naturally going to look at it through scarcity and you're naturally going to look at it through fear. So you got to work to get there. If you hear Bryce Harper talk, he talks so much about gratitude these days. I don't know what it is, but these last couple of years, you go back to his big home run a couple of years ago. They said that ball he hit, uh, you know, I believe in the, in the um, NLCS left center bomb to win the game. They asked him after the game, you know, what were you thinking walking up there? He's like, I'm just, I wish he goes to tell you the truth. I was just grateful that I had an opportunity to go up there and have a chance to win the game or an opportunity to go up there and do well. I'm grateful I play the game of baseball. I'm grateful what it's done for me, you know? And the other day I heard him say it again. So I've heard him say it a few times. So when you're going into the box with a state of gratitude, you're not so worried about failure. You're not so worried about results. You know, you're looking at it in a totally different lens, more of like an abundance lens. Like I'm going to, I've done the work. I'm prepared. When I get in this box, I'm going to do my process. And like my process was, Chinch, you, you realize how important the, the deep breath is. Because at the end of the day, dude, when you're in that box and you step in, you're in a sympathetic nervous system, which means you're fight or flight. You have to, you have, you get to the mind through the body. You have to do something in your body to get to the mind to calm it down. So that deep breath, you watch these, the best hitters out there, Harper, Trout, these guys, Judgy. These guys are all taking a deep breath to slow themselves down. So that, so the first thing I did, take a deep breath, get into that parasympathetic, slow myself down, look, look, uh, hunt, hunt the fast, but look middle way, react in. When you see the best players in the game, dude, they stick with the process. Because at the end of the day, you can't teach experience. They know that's what works. So they're not going to just jump ship when they don't have the results they want. And I think that's a problem sometimes with a lot of young kids. They get in the game, all of a sudden they don't have the success or the results they want right away, even if they've had some decent at-bats, and then they jump ship on what their process is. So you got to get a good breath. you got to be able to hunt a certain zone, and you got to believe that you just need to do it three out of ten times to be one of the best players in the game. I love that. That's great. So let's keep going with that, this, this kind of like the mental – performance type thing because jackson holiday like do you believe in like the power of like positive like mental state because he told this is an interesting thing about this home run he hit last night and by the way everybody in the country wants him to be on a big league team i know it's so funny for his own team but right now but <laughs> but uh he told the coaches before the game i am locked in i'm going to try to hit a ball off the batter's eye tonight in my first about, I'm going to try to hit up. And he literally <laughs> thought that and basically did it. So like, what, what is that? Like, do you, would you sit there before a game, especially like in a playoffs or something and just go like, think about fielding ground balls cleanly. Think about where you're going to hit the ball. Do, does that go into a major league baseball player's head? You know, you oh, yeah, Bryant with the, the headphones on before the game. Like, I can't imagine what he was thinking before a, like yeah. some guys I hear, like they actually literally put moves on in their head. Like if he, if he goes to my glove side or he goes this way, I'm going to do this. Is that something you practiced as a Dude, player? It, 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 if you close your eyes right now and thought about spiders on you, would you think it would, could, could you freak yourself out? Yes. And I'm not going to do that. Well, okay. Well, good. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to do that either because I know I, I've, I've right. done it before where it You're freaks right. you out. Well, guess what? 
Here's another thing, too. Do me a favor. Close your eyes. Close your eyes for a second. Okay? I want you to just do this exercise for me. I want you to think about you're in your kitchen right now. You're about to make yourself a glass of iced tea. Okay? okay? But you're going to cut up a lemon to put it, in the, to put it into the uh, iced tea. Before you put in the iced tea, I want you to take one of the, one of the little um, things of lemon. I want you to squeeze it into your mouth. I'm suck on it. it. I want you to suck on the lemon. <laughs> Do you feel the saliva coming in your mouth? That's killing me. So Dude, so isn't, it, isn't this incredible? Do you, do you feel the saliva that just came into your mouth? Absolutely. Your brain, think about this. Your brain doesn't know if it's real or not. It doesn't. I mean, everyone out there listening should do that. Think about sucking on a lemon. I guarantee you'll start to create saliva in your mouth, right? I'm doing it too. So your brain doesn't know whether it's real or not, right? So that's why visualization becomes a superpower, dude comes a superpower. So when Jackson Holiday says, I'm trying to drive that ball over the center fielder's head off that back, the, the batter's eye, he's visualizing himself doing it. Now, is he going to do it? Who knows? But more often than not, when you start thinking about visualization with intention of going that way, things do happen. So I remember Willie Stargell saying when I read in the mental game of baseball, he would say, Hey, listen, whenever I got in trouble, line drive back up the middle line drive back, always got me locked back in. Right. So when a hitters, I remember when my kids were little, I always told them hit a home run over the center fielder's head. Because if you miss a little early, you're right, miss a little late, you're left. But if you're going that way, you're usually in a good direction. So I love the thought process of visualization for players trying to lock into a certain target, especially dead center that sets you up for everything. But then a guy like Jackson Holiday just happens to be so eye-hand coordination uh, next level that, you know, he can, he can actually do with, you know, something that he, he tells his brain to do. That's great, dude. It's funny you say that. The, while you were talking with the lemon thing, it made me think we, uh, there's this really awesome pizza place here called Rico's Pizza. Right. And it's this hot oil pizza. Right. And it's hot. And, and they got these little, like, fire peppers on it whatever and whenever jess is like you want to do the rico's hot oil tonight i start sweating <laughs> I, I really do i no joke dude i really <clears throat> your point is is well taken because I, yeah. I, that happens to me sometimes isn't that incredible though though so that's it, what i mean like your mind is so powerful we don't give it enough credit yeah. and i must admit dude really quick one one thing that drives me crazy because i work with some you know some you know some players and 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 different guys and kids in different ages high school and they'll always, you know, always ask them, hey, what, you know, what part of the game is mental? What part of the game is mental, man? About 90%. Okay, great. Hey, how much do you work on the mental side of the game? Ah, you know what? Not really. Zero. Have you learned how to breathe correctly? No. Do you read any books? No. Do you have any mantras you tell yourself? When you get scared and fearful and, you're, and, you're, and your body's in that sympathetic nervous system with the bases loaded in the game line, what do you do? What tool do you use to help yourself slow yourself down so you can let your skills come out? I don't really have any. I'm telling you, dude, it, it absolutely drives me crazy. Yeah, it drives me crazy. And, like, there are things you can do. You know, there is stuff you can do. And, like, that's why you know, I'm just saying with Breakthrough Pro, the, the, the course that I do about the mental side of the game, like, that's what it is. I'm teaching you tools to, um, to help yourself in the game or in life to, to get to the mind through the body. And how do you do it? So there's so many guys out there that never f f fulfill their potential in their sport or in life because I think they never learn those tools. They just do what they've always done and they get what they've always got. Hmm. That's very, very impressive, dude. I love it. I mean, it, it, there is, you know, you know, when you feel good and you know, we don't feel good when you're an athlete, right? Like, and you just exactly. on both days, when you're not feeling good, you have to figure out how to get through that. When you're feeling good, you have to make sure you're not overcompensating and thinking you can do anything and getting out of your head and moving right. and trying to do something that you aren't right. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's and, 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 and a lot of times and you know, dude, you know, a lot of times, if you have an O for game, what do you do? You go right to the cages. Mm. Well, a lot of it could have been you weren't slow enough. You didn't see the way. Your eyes are connected to your brain, dude. They're part dude, of, your them. eyes are actually part of your brain. That one game last year where the Yankees were really struggling, you were the hitting coach, and you, who was it, you, Volpe, Donaldson, post game, like 1130 or midnight, went and hit in the cages. I remember right. that clearly. That was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Just got to, like, get, let me clear this out of my head and move on to my, what I know, right? I right, guess. right. Uh, I'll tell you one guy who's got a clear head these days is Shane Bieber, bro. Second start, 10 hits, 
he's pitched 12 innings so far. He's only given up 10 hits, and he has 20 strikeouts and just one walk. And the Guardians are looking pretty good, man. The, 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 the Central in the American League is – Central in both leagues is actually super interesting. Doing well. Right yeah. So let's talk a little Bieber and – couple rumors because don't forget bieber is in his walk year a lot of talk about if the guardians get out of it that's where the yankees are going to try to go and trade for shane bieber so your thoughts on him how they're doing you think the guardians can hang in there or do you think he's going to be a yankee next to cole in a second <laughs> well sick because he's a free agent after this year isn't he yeah sorry yeah I said walk here. Is that the right term? No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, walk here, same thing. I was just, you know, just definitely yeah. confirming what you said. Um, bro, when Shane Bieber's like this, that slider that he has is pretty much, you know, it's 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 uh, Devin Williams' changeup-esque. You know, it's one of the best pitches in the game. You know, when Shane Bieber's on, it's, it's at another level. So, um, you, you don't think that the Yankees or somebody would love to have him in the rotation? Are you kidding me? Um, but I think, you know, one thing, if, if, if the Indians are doing what they're doing, and Stephen Vogt loves, love Voter, by the way, being in that, right. running the helm and taking over for Tito there in Cleveland, I think he's the right guy. Um, but, you know, I, I think this team intends to be in the postseason, you know, all, you know in, in the postseason hunt all year. And you got to have a guy like Bieber, you know, that's been this dominant if you're going to get to where the Cleveland needs to get to because they don't have a ton of room for error with their depth, but man, Shane Bieber, man, this guy has looked pretty much like the, in his first two starts, looked like the best pitcher in the game. Yeah. I mean, no, like not more else to say about it. Boom. Yeah. One, one other thing, dude, in the, in the first couple starts, they were, they were talking about, he's really using his change up more, which he hardly to hardly threw in 2023. Now he's averaging 92.7 miles an hour, which is good, mm -hmm. but like, you know, nowadays that's pretty average, right? It's probably an average fastball. So if you're throwing that change up, right? Because his his bread and butter is that slider. So if you're throwing that change up, now you're getting guys off the slider and off the heater, right? Because if you go fastball slider and you don't really throw the change up, visually your your eyes as a hitter go, okay, everything's hard. So I can I can sit hard. You start throwing a change up that's working. Now you got now you get it's a whole new ball game. Dude, it's funny you say that. I think that is the new game. That's that's the playbook now for pitching, right? Because Blanco yesterday, I was watching something where somebody said every one of his strikeouts the other night were on a were on breaking balls. Wow, every single one. He only, I think there were only four uh, outs that happened, or four balls put in play off of his fastball. So I, I kind of think that's probably. Uh, you know the anal you, you worked in baseball dude last year like the analytics departments you you were telling me last year like they know when your curveball is going to be perfect against this particular batter i really am starting to see like you said the breaking ball is a and the fastballs are b for some guys who maybe don't really get it up there it, it, dude, it was the first time, you know, what, being a coach last year and really going over it, going through the, going through the reports and going through the hitters meetings and stuff like that. It was the first time I was like, wow, this guy's 52% slider. There you go. It was, it was like, you know, he, although there was some guys throwing like 95, 97, 52% slider. This guy's 47% slider. It's incredible. Cutter, a lot of cutters. And, 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 and nowadays too, Chinks, one thing I noticed a lot, like, you know, a lot of guys were either used to be cutters or sinker guys. Now they're cutter. And now they have a cutter and a sinker and a four seamer. So they throw three different fastballs and a lot of guys. So it's, it's, it's no surprise to see Bieber probably looking at the analytics, looking at his year last year and going, you know what? I can make some adjustments. I can get even better. I'm going to start throwing this change up more and develop it better. Yeah. And Hey, that's, there might be a game plan for that. You know, Marcus Stroman's my height. He's got six pitches, dude. Right. Six pitches. And he throws every one of them. It's not the same game. Like you know, it's not right. fastball, curveball. Like it was like in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not, you're not putting yourself in a box anymore as a pitcher. Well, I'm just a sinker slider guy. You know, a lot when I was coming up, sinker guy, sinker slider, sinker. Now they're like, no, I'm sinker slider, cutter, change up, curveball, and maybe a split for you every once in a while. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's not fair. <laughs> you're a hitter. That's incredible. Do no. you know what I think of that? Chris Bassett. Ah. surprised me so much in Toronto last year. We're game planning for him. I'm like, 
Chris Bassett. I'm like, good pitcher. <laughs> I think of him a couple years ago with the Mets, really, you know, held it down when when uh, DeGrom and Scherzer got hurt. I was like, man, Chris Bassett, Taiwan Walker really held down the Mets. Hmm. He faced Bassett last year and was with the Yankees, dude. I was like, wow. This guy had six pitches and threw them all for strikes and does well with them. <laughs> How do you do that game plan? <laughs> hey, guys, yeah, dude, you're just okay. like – Hunt hunt something out over the plate. Hunt a mistake. Wow. That's a mistake. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's perfect. This is uh spins us right into a guy who all right. So we were talking about a lot of successes. One guy who's struggling. Uh we'll end on Josh Hader. Uh not looking sharp. Looks like you know, they always say this, man. They say it in spring training. They say it in the first three starts of the season. Uh, his velocity's down. His velocity's down. We need to be worried about him. Okay. He's not doing well so far, Josh Hader, but like you got to take a little bit of breath with somebody who's that good as a pitcher, right? I, I don't know what to think of him right now. Well, dude, the reason you listen, this guy's got a track record pretty long. You know, you don't give a guy five years, 90 million without, a, without a pretty legit track record. So I'm not worried about Hader. You know, he, he, Soto had an incredible bat with him the other day with, you know, ball was four inches off the plate. He lines one to left. So he gave it up there, but you know, David Schneider got him last night on a slider that was just a backup slider, and he ended up catching it and just driving out of the ballpark, and they lost 2-1. So I'm not so worried about Hater, man. This guy's one of the best in the game. It's so early. You know, everything's so magnified. If you have two bad outings in a row, if it was the, if he was dominating, it was the middle of July, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So Yeah, that's a good point. You know? Right. Great. Uh, um, what, what, dude, Chinchy, one other thing I want to just say. Um, um Larry Lacchino passed away, who was who was the CEO of the Red Sox when I was there in 08. Larry's a Pittsburgh guy, you know, had a, a great career also, too. I was in the Final Four for Princeton back in the day, I think, with Bill Bradley. Um, but one of the best executives the game's ever seen. I believe he, I believe he won a Super Bowl with the Redskins, then went on to the, then went on to the Padres um, and the or- Orioles and the Padres. Uh, went to the World Series there, won it with the Orioles. Then he was the guy, really spearheaded. Think about this. He spearheaded that Red Sox run. Obviously, you know, um, John Henry and uh, Tom Werner were the owners, but Lakino was right there with those guys. And think about this. Theo Epstein and Sam Kennedy were like the interns for Larry Lakino in San Diego. So when he made the bold move to hire Theo Epstein at 28 years old to be the Red Sox GM in 2003, bro, that was a bold move. Mm. Theo goes on to be probably the greatest executive, one of the greatest executives ever in the game. Breaks the curse in Boston, breaks the curse in Chicago, right? Sam Kennedy's still the president, CEO or whatever, president of the of the Boston Red Sox. And so many other people, the web of that. But Larry Lacchino having the cojones to go out and, and hire Theo Epstein at 28 years old to be the GM of the Red Sox changed the history of that franchise. So Larry, rest in peace, man. You were always so kind to me and I'm so grateful. We, our paths crossed. Uh, he always kind of took care of us as took care of me as a Pittsburgher. I could always feel that love. But when I was with the Red Sox in, in 08, man, Larry Lacchino, one of the best to do it and, uh, you know, passed away. The other day and just rest in peace larry i just wanted to give him a little the, shout out change rest in peace dude great point I'm, I'm sorry we didn't even think to do that earlier but great idea to do that i was actually telling just about him a little i've actually was lucky enough to meet him a few times first of all coolest dude in the planet like so yeah. here for folks who don't know him as well and want to go read his bio because he was such a great ambassador of the game the yankees are called the evil empire because of him that's right. That was his quote. I'll, I'll give you a super quick thing here. This was uh, in December 2022. Boston Red Sox team president Larry Lacchino unwittingly added another title to the collection of anger between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Angry that the Yankees, angry at the Yankees for edging out the Red Sox for high-profile free agent pitcher Jose Contreras. Remember him? Oh yeah. The New York Yankees signed Cuban defector to a four-year deal for 32 million. Just a week after inking. Hideki Matsui. Oh my God. I didn't realize they signed them on the same time. And so the New York Times reached out for a quote. Lucchino responded with a no comment and then paused and said, 
the evil empire extends its tentacles even into <laughs> Latin America, which is an all-time, that is an all-time sports quote. That's like, that's an all-time sports quote from an all-time all baseball executive, sports executive, and yeah, you know, some good, great call, Case. Great call. Yeah, incredible. So, what a, yeah, what a quote. The evil empire is lives on the tentacles nice all right uh so we love him we wish him well his family well and everything like that um what do you got going on today anything big anything huge oh my god not much man so it's raining here i'm i'm uh got got my workout in this morning all that all the good stuff and i'm uh probably gonna go read a little bit <laughs> does that sound fun it's a lazy day man yeah it's kind of yeah just sit back and enjoy myself a little bit so what are you doing man you got anything going on nothing special. When, when are the pool guys coming 15th dude just, I think you do. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting them, it's good that it's raining. Get the grass to grow a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Nice, bro. All right. All right, everybody. man. Have a great, have a great rest of the day, brother. And don't forget, man, I got to get it out. But number 72, we're, we're getting rid of, get, we're, we're, we're giving away number 72, Sean Casey Yankee jersey. Let's go. Autograph. Autograph. Yeah. Autograph Yankee jersey. Nice. Be the second one ever. Go. mantle and you could you could have it on your in your mantle and jeter 72 incredible strong <laughs> vintage too vintage there you go Love you. Okay, we, 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 we want to get the subscribers on youtube up to four thousand, and keep growing the instagram and all the stuff we're doing so all right all right brother we'll, we'll, i'll maybe get it out tomorrow where or something oh let's do it good idea yeah. all right yeah see you all right, man. all right you have a great rest of the day everyone out there thanks for listening we'll catch you guys tomorrow see you